It took everything they had, but they finish it out. That does it for this one. On this edition of Titans All Access, win one game. That's the Titans mantra this week as they prepare to play the season finale at Houston. John Robinson previews the big matchup. Mike Keith has had some great interviews this year. See his best questions and the best answers from Titans players. We'll have the story of how Laurel Murchison made Christmas special for some folks in his hometown in North Carolina. And Dave McGinnis is taking a deep dive into some of the best efforts from the Titans' last game. All that and more on this edition of Titans All Access, which starts now. The monster, Derek Henry. Sack! John Evans, A.J. Brown to the house. Brian Tannehill taking him to school. This is the Bet MGM Studio, and this is Titans All Access. This is Amy Wells, and I'm Mike Keith, and this is Week 17. This is very dramatic. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> That's this, dramatic pause. It was. It was a good dramatic pause, but this is the most exciting week of NFL football. It certainly is. The Tennessee Titans will play the Houston Texans in the season finale at NRG Stadium in Houston. Kickoff is set for 325 Central Time. We're on the air with Titans Countdown on Titans Radio at 2 Central Time. That is a time change. The reason they've done that is to build drama. Ooh, drama. Because Indianapolis plays Jacksonville, and they've moved that game to 325 Central Time because Tennessee Houston and Indianapolis Jacksonville impact each other the most in terms of who will win the AFC South. All right, Mike, let's break it down a little bit. There are a lot of things that could impact the Tennessee Titans in some way. Sure. Break down some of those things on Sunday. We'll start with simple. Okay. Titans beat Houston in Houston. Titans AFC South champions, period. Love that. Home playoff game. Yep. At worst, the number four seed in the AFC. That's scenario number one. Nothing about that changes. Okay. If the Titans do not win the ball game and the Colts lose to Jacksonville, the Titans are AFC South champions based on division record. Okay. So if the Colts lose, the Titans win the division regardless of whatever happens between Tennessee and Houston. All right. And then if you get into a scenario of you're trying to get in as a wild card, you would need Baltimore to lose to Cincinnati or Miami to lose to Buffalo. Okay. There are several scenarios involving ties. We don't talk about ties on this show. We don't discuss ties. I don't wear a tie. I don't, don't like ties. And we don't discuss them. That's just the way it goes. So that's the way that goes. Uh, a lot of different scenarios, but the, the problem, if it's a problem, is the opponent. Always tough Houston. Houston not having a great year. We know that. Some people would think they're playing out the string, but they won't. They'll come ready to go. Remember how they were on October 18th right here at Nissan Stadium? Overtime game that the Titans won in the overtime period with the King Cat, Derek Henry to the left to pay dirt to win it 42 to 36. But it took a last second TD catch from A.J. Brown to even get it into overtime. It's beautiful. Oh, beautiful. But even before that, it took Jeffrey Simmons batting down a two point conversion at the end of regulation just to keep it a seven point game. Had the Texans converted that two-point conversion, they would have led by nine. They would have won in Nashville that day. Instead, the Titans go down, tie it, get the kickoff in overtime, go down and score, and it ends. Big win for the Titans. Fantastic victory for everybody who had a chance to be at Nissan Stadium on that October Sunday. But Deshaun Watson was fabulous, and the Titans had to pull out every stop known to man to win a game they probably shouldn't have won. But that's what the Titans always have to do against the Texans. The Texans and the Titans are a great rivalry. It's 
going to be a hard fought game no matter what the records say. I'm looking forward to it. Titans need to win it. Yep. If they win it, if the Titans are victorious at NRG Stadium in week 17 with a 325 kickoff time, well, the Titans are AFC South champions for the first time since the team started 10-0 in 2008 and finished 13-3. Wow. Home playoff game. That would be so exciting. It would be really exciting. We're going to talk about that a lot during the course of this program. We have so much more to sum up when Titans All Access returns. Coach Dave McGinnis goes beneath the surface to look at some winning plays that the Titans have had recently. Stay tuned. This is Coach Mack. Welcome to Beneath the Surface, powered by Microsoft Surface. Today, we're going to look at four plays from the Titans Green Bay game, and we're going to incorporate all three aspects of the game. We're going to look at offensive plays, we're going to look at defensive plays, and we're going to look at a special teams play. The first play we're going to look at here, it's 43 seconds left in the second quarter. We're going to see a nice touchdown throw. Watch the manipulation of a pocket, and then John U. Smith working himself open in the back of the end zone makes a great sliding catch. Watch the pocket. This is four-man rush, perfect pocket. Ryan Tannehill now manipulates a pocket, moves up in the B gap, eyes downfield. John U. does a really good job of uncovering in the end zone, uncovers, and then goes down low for the catch. Touchdown, Titans. We're going to look at a special teams play here now. What we're going to look at now is Darrington Evans. It's a really nice return. The blocking is beautiful. This is man blocking. It's a middle return that breaks out to the right side, does a very good job of setting his blocks up. You've got to hit it hard, and now he makes moves, cutting off of his blocks. You can see a hat on a hat, makes a man miss, runs through an arm tackle. Nice, nice return that sets up our following play. And now we're looking at third and one. Watch everybody collapse on Derrick Henry on this third and one. You've got everybody collapsing. Green Bay has called a run blitz. Take a look at number 31, their deep safety, how far he takes this run fake. And by the time he realizes what has happened, as they're coming on this run pressure, Ryan Tannehill has got his wheels. He is gone. 45 yards later, touchdown Titans. Signature finger roll by Ryan Tannehill. This was a great, great example of, of the draw that Derrick Henry is to defenses. The last play we're going to like, look at a defensive play. Now we've got a zone pressure. You very seldom can fool Aaron Rodgers. They fooled him on this defense. They bring a pressure from his left side, cause him to flush out, but it's a pressure that is a zone pressure. It's zone coverage with pressure coming. It's not man coverage. He misreads the coverage. Malcolm Butler does a really, really good job of keeping his eyes on the quarterback, feeling the route as it's coming to him, and breaks right in front of Devontae Adams for a big, big interception. And there you have four plays, including all three phases of the Titans in this ball game against the Green Bay Packers. Two on offense, one on special teams, and then a turnover and interception by Malcolm Butler on defense. Coming up next on Titans All Access, the best moments of the Nissan Insider segments from this season. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Titans All Access. As the 2020 regular season comes to a close, we're revisiting some of the best moments from Mike Keith's Nissan Insiders. I'm standing here five months from now, and I'm describing Jeffrey Simmons' 2020 season. How do you hope I'm describing it? What do you hope I'm saying? First off, um, you know, just I helped my team win the Super Bowl. You know, um, secondly, you know, I just want everyone to see that the reason why I came to the Titans and the reason why I came here, and I feel like John them um, got me here, Kovrave them got me here, is because they they want me here to disrupt the line of scrimmage. And my goal is to do whatever I can to help this team win the Super Bowl. But same time, you know, for me personally, I want to show everybody in this league that I deserve and belong in this league by dominating every snap of the um, game. So, give me another guy on this football team that you just respect as a football player in that same way, regardless of position, but you just say, that dude just brings it all the time and 
I love being a teammate of his. Oh man, that's that's honestly, man. I mean, this might sound so cliche, but that's such a tough question. Honestly, man, we got a a, a group of guys, man, that is, has has came in and um, committed to the foundation of this team and everything that we believe on. And I think that it wasn't one guy that really stuck out to me that um, allowed us to, to get us in the position that we were in last year. Man, I can go on and say countless names of guys that's been in this system, of guys that just came in this system. Um, but collectively, man, we did this thing together, man. And I think we all have a certain respect level for one another that, you know, no matter what happens, man, we're we going to be in this thing together, man. So that's just my approach on it. People know about you, not only a great football player growing up, a 19th round draft pick of the Padres, super outfielder great growing up, when the playoffs start to get here, do you ever miss baseball at all? That's a good question because, to be honest, uh, a lot of people know I play baseball, but I really do not watch baseball at all, like at all. So you don't know what's going on with the Padres or anybody else? I, I promise you, my brother turns to it on TV. I watch for a couple of swings, then I exit the room. It is the most boringest game to watch on TV to me, <laughs> but I can play it somehow. What would you say are the skills that you had in baseball that you certainly use as a football player, skills that were really applicable to both for an athlete? I would just say hand-eye coordination with catching the ball and tracking the ball. You know, if you can track a little small baseball, you can track around football, so it makes it, makes it easier. Do you feel like you're a sort of a motivator or a mentor for younger players who, because you're not really a young player anymore. You're sort of in that mid range now. Right, right. Yeah, honestly, I try to be both. I mean, I always try to motivate everybody by my actions. I don't really like to talk a lot, but when I feel the need to talk and, and speak to the young guys, I always try to tell them, man, hey, I was in the same position. You know, I feel like I always been doubted. I feel like I've a lot of different stages in my life, people can use for examples to try to keep going and keep going. So that's kind of the spokesperson I want to be. I want to be a spokesperson for the people that have been doubted before in their life or feel like they wasn't getting the recognition they deserve, that it really doesn't matter. It's all about being a great person, having a great heart, you know, and good things happen to great people. So that's what I try to do. It ain't about what they do. It's about what we do. Yeah. It's about the intensity we bring. Yeah. It's about the that we do. Let's go hard, man. Give me your all on every single play. Because I'm going to give you my all. And I'm going to own everything. How do you get away from the game in season, knowing that while it's a game and you love it, it is your job, and everybody has to get away from their job for a little bit? Definitely uh, spend time with my family. I'm a big, big family guy, so love spending time with my family. Probably take a vacation here or there. But you know, I'm a, a homebody guy, like to chill, watch movies. My daughter's here now, so that, that, that doesn't get no better than that. Spending time with her, and get to see and watch her grow, and you know, laugh and have fun, and you know, just have those moments. Why do you enjoy being a dad so much? It's just a uh, indescribable feeling, you know. It's like like that's like being like Christmas, Christmas every day, you know, seeing her smile seeing her laugh, watching her grow, it's just, it's, it's just so cool to look at something that, you know, I created and I mean, I can't even, can't even put it in words. Every day I wake up, every day I come home, I just can't, I look forward to get home to her and seeing her. Being a girl dad is the best, isn't it? The best. What has Rob Moore meant to you, Corey? Man. Everything. It, it's kind of hard to put into words, but he's he's been there for me not only through you know my football adversity, but but with life as well. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that I've been handling. Me and my family's been handling off the field that you know hasn't really been disclosed to the media. And Rob has been a huge part of that. You know, just keeping my mental right and you know making sure I'm taking the right steps. And his faith is really strong, and you know I've learned a lot from him on that aspect. You know, guys, I hate to say it, but Mike Keith knocks it out of the park with those interviews. All right, we're going to take a quick break, bring Mike Keith back, and we're going to be joined by John Robinson for his scouting report. Stick around. Titans All Access continues from the Bet MGM studio. Time now to bring in General Manager John Robinson for the Farm Bureau Insurance Scouting Report. And we know what this is all about, the Houston Texans this weekend. And John, Mike Vrabel's message all week to the team is just win one game. That has been his only key throughout the course of the week. Has been just keeping everything simple been a big part of the preparation? 
Yeah, like I think, you know, the part of the um, the message this week to win one game, you know, it, it's doing whatever we have to do to win that game. Whether that's simplifying things, whether that's adding a wrinkle or two here or there, kind of change things up, whatever we have to do as a football team to prepare to go on the road and win a game in Houston, that's what we'll do. How did the Titans get their passing game back on track against the Houston Texans? Yeah, you know, I think it's about executing the details. Uh, the passing game, it's all about the protection up front. That's where it starts. You got to get on those guys. You got to block them. You got to keep the pocket clean. I mean, if it does get a little dirty, Ryan's got to get in a, in a place where he can still deliver the football. If it's man coverage, the receivers got to beat man coverage. They got to win their one-on-one -on -one matchups. If it's zone, they got to find the spots in the zone coverage and then create a window for Ryan to deliver an accurate pass and then make the catch. So it's about executing those details, getting back to the fundamentals that we have done in past games and doing that this weekend. Your opponent on Sunday, the Houston Texans, not going to the playoffs. After the Texans game with the Bengals, J.J. Watt, their perennial all-pro, made some comments about professionalism, and this team better pull it together, and we're going to go play hard in Week 17. If you can't come in and put work in in the building, go out to the practice field and work hard, do your lifts and do what you're supposed to do, you should not be here. This is a job. You actually had an experience with him nearly a decade ago where he showed you the kind of passion that he has exhibited throughout his career and even now. Yeah, he was a pretty big time prospect coming out of Wisconsin and, and he was kind of on my on my trail of, of private workouts and went and spent, you know, half a day with JJ uh, and we did some some film work. Uh, he was he was early. He had everything set up in the film room. We did some on the field work where we worked. I worked him out for about an hour on the field through drills. He had all the bags and everything set up. So, you know, just in getting to know him, certainly what all his coaches had said about him uh, there at Wisconsin and uh, the way he played the game at Wisconsin. And then in that setting, half a day setting, if you will, with me, his approach to the game about being a professional and working hard and showing up and doing your job. You could see that that was going to transcend itself over to the pro game. No matter the situation, no matter the team record, Deshaun Watson just keeps going. Is matching that relentless attitude one of the keys to defending him? Yeah, I certainly think so. Um, it, that and, and, and discipline. You, you know, you see a lot of these guys, and, and, and we're as guilty as anybody of, you know, if you get through there, whether you blitz him or, or, you, or you, you beat one of the linemen to get back there, and you really think you're going to nail him. Or, or, you know, you've got a pass rush lane and you get out of it just a little bit because you think you can go over here and get him. He makes you pay. He doesn't, he, he doesn't need a whole lot of room to, to get through there. But you have to stay after him and you have to stay disciplined in your approach when you're trying to get him. Quietly in recent weeks, it feels like running back David Johnson, who now plays for the Texans, has regained his form of 2016 when he starred for the Cardinals. Yeah, I think stylistically, you know, you can see a lot of those things. You know, he's a really smooth, he's a fluid runner. He's got excellent vision. He's got a slashing kind of run style where he'll crease you on a cutback if you're not disciplined on the backside. He's catching the ball out of the backfield well. He's certainly trending in a positive note and had a good year for him. What would it mean to this Titans organization to win the AFC South in Houston this Sunday? Yeah, I mean, I think just to win it, no matter where it is, would be, would be huge for us. But that hadn't happened around here in a long time. But it would be a testament to everyone in the organization, you know, especially this year, the players, the staff, the coaches, and certainly our ownership, Miss Amy and, and Kenneth and Barkley, and everybody who's been a part of the Titans organization, whose roots are pretty deep there in the Houston area. Just to come away with a division championship would be pretty special. John, let's go do it this weekend in Houston. That's the plan, Mike. Appreciate you. Rookie defensive lineman Larell Murchison did something special for his hometown for Christmas. You'll learn about that, and we've got Mike Keith's keys to winning at Houston as Titans All Access continues. A lot of people know Larell Murchison as a Titans rookie defensive lineman. But he's so much more. He's so much more. The Fayetteville Observer told a great story. They reminded us that he is Bladen County, North Carolina's first ever NFL draftee. He's from Elizabethtown, North Carolina. And while he couldn't be there himself, he gave back to his community as a lot of youngsters got winter coats, toys, and other presents. And then at White's Creek Missionary Baptist Church, he gave out gift bags to seniors. That is a way, even though he's a youngster and he's a fifth round pick and he's fighting to make the 
travel squad, so to speak, every week. This young man doing good things at Christmas time back in Elizabethtown, North Carolina. It warms your heart. He's given back to people of all ages, from kids to our senior friends. That's right. That's from so nice. People 1 to 92. Ah, uh, the song. Yes, the song. No Indeed. Singing. No Merch, singing. good job. That's great. Outstanding job by Laurel Murchison and a good story we wanted to share with you here on Titans All Access as we begin to wrap up the regular season. Can you believe it? How about some keys? Let's do some keys, Mike Keith. You know, we've kind of used them up. Oh, so we're out of keys? We're kind of used up the, the different themes, the different sort of points. You know we've got to protect the ball. We've got to protect the quarterback. What this week comes down to is not only doing it any way you can do it to win this ball game, but this game is about your big guys. This game is about Derrick Henry. It's about Ryan Tannehill. It's about A.J. Brown. It's about Corey Davis. It's about Jonu Smith. It's about Kevin Byard. It's about Jeffrey Simmons. It's about Malcolm Butler. Your best players have to make plays in a situation where you have to win. This is a playoff game. Those are the keys to winning playoff games is your best players making things happen. That's what this is all about. So your keys, the names and numbers that you know best for the Tennessee Titans have to make it happen this weekend in Houston. It's simple, but it's important. It's simple, but it's vital if the Titans are going to do it. And remember, if the Titans beat the Texans, they are AFC South champions for the first time in 12 years and we'll get hats and t-shirts. I want a t-shirt so bad. We all do, no doubt about it. <sighs> Remember, the game kicks off at 325 Central Time. Amy Wells, myself, our entire Titans radio crew on the air at 2 Central, we hope you'll join us. Happy New Year, and let's get a win in Houston and win this division. For Amy Wells, Mike Keith says thanks for being with us, and we'll see you next time. I'm so fired up.